something. I have a little friend with me here today and he's going to uh, help me tell you about another type of task that you might get in the Abitur. This time we're going to talk about questions where you're asked to compare two things. So the first thing to be clear about is where you'll find that in the Abitur. In contrast to the other formats we've talked about up to now, this would be in the second part. So the first part, reading comprehension, second part, analysis. And it's as a part of the, the analysis that you'll be well, you may be asked to compare two things. Um, like we've done with the others, let me just quickly read you the question that we had in our Klausur so that we can use that as the basis for our further discussions. So the question was, compare the white working class men as depicted in the text to Walt in Gran Torino. So here you're being asked to compare people or one person to a group of people. But of course, you might just as well be asked to compare a particular topic. So let's say, I don't know, compare the topic of violence as it's presented in Gran Torino to violence as we see it in a text that you've been given in the exam. Now, when you've got your question, uh, the, the first essential thing to, to realize is what exactly compare means what exactly are you being asked to do i would say you're being asked to do two things basically the first thing to do is to extract and select relevant information so in this case um, what do we find out in the film about walt as a working class man and equally what do we find out in the text about the working class men that are described there but you're not just being asked to select and extract that information you then have to put these two sides walt and the working class men into some kind of relationship to each other. So in other words, what are the similarities between them, but also what are the differences between them? And let me just warn you, uh, when you get a question like that, it's never going to be so simple as just to say, well, they're 100% similar in every way. And it's uh, just as impossible for you to say, oh, they're completely different in every way. You're always going to be asked to say, basically, well, these are the similarities, these are the differences. And of course, there can be more similarities and differences or vice versa, but you really do need to deal with both aspects of it. So how are we going to structure this? Well, you're going to write a, a brief introduction. It really doesn't have to be long here. Something along the lines of um, Walt, the protagonist in Gran Torino, uh, is in many ways a typical working class American man. Uh, in what ways is he similar? In what ways is he different to the working class men that we have presented in the text? And as usual, you'll uh, give all the usual relevant information about the text, who wrote it, when was it published, that kind of thing. So then you get to the meat of the question. And there are basically two ways of doing it. So either you can have one big block where you write about uh, the working class men, and then after that, a second big block where you write about Walt, and then you refer when you're writing about Walt back to the working class men all the time. So basically your structure is two large blocks, or you can go back and forth. So you make one relevant point about the working class men, and then the same point about Walt. Is he similar or different in that respect? Uh, then back to the working class men for another point, back to Walt, and back and forth like that. And the question I'm often asked is, which of these two methods is better? Let me be completely honest with you. I don't think one is better than the other per se. They each have their advantages and disadvantages. I think often the, the method going back and forth is sometimes more, more elegant. It helps you stick to the, the relevant points. On the other hand, you've got a much simpler structure when you're doing it in two large blocks. So you take your pick, choose what's better for you, and do it that way. Um, so let, let's look in a little bit more detail about what you could write uh, in relation to this question about Walt and the, the working class men. I've noted down a couple of points that you could make, first of all about the working class men and then about Walt. And you'll see in this case there are a lot of similarities, but there are some differences that have to be noted. And like I said, if you're not mentioning the differences, you've not really uh, done the, the question properly or as well as you, you could have. So what about the, the white working class men? Well, we know they're very traditional. They believe in traditional gender roles. Um, they used to be the breadwinners, the people who earned the money for their families, but today they've lost their pride. 
in the text it says they feel like losers. They believe in blunt talk, straight talk, saying what you mean, manly courage. They have this uh, deeply ingrained dislike of the professional classes, although they don't mind rich people. They would like to be richer versions of themselves. Uh, they're willing to work hard to achieve their success. And one of the most important things for them is their independence. And many of them would like to be self-employed, have their own businesses and things like that. And when we look at Walt, we'll see many of the, the same points. Again, he's very traditional too. He believes in, in men uh, protecting themselves, protecting their families. That's why he wants Tao to, to man up like he does and teaches Tao male behavior with the dating uh, and talking like a real man, fixing things and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Walt was, he isn't anymore, of course, because he's retired, but he was the breadwinner for, for his family. Uh, he did have that status. He's lost that status. He's not really taken seriously by his family members anymore or by the gang members. Walt's a great straight talker. We see that throughout the film. Um, he's also alienated from, from his uh, middle-class sons in the same way as the white working class where he believes in hard work. Uh, he, he's impressed by Tao when Tao starts to work hard. Um, we don't really know about his attitude to, to self-employment. I suppose we could, we could imagine that like the working class men, he thinks that's a good thing, but we're not specifically told about that. So in nearly all respects, they're the same, but there is one essential difference at least. And that's the fact that Walt himself is fighting to, to keep this dignity uh, that he has. He's, he's willing to, to take his gun and to take matters into his own hand in order to protect his dignity and, of course, the dignity of the Hmong. The white working class are a bit different there. They're, they're kind of more passive, um, and their, their hero is, is kind of Donald Trump. They would like Donald Trump to solve these problems for them. You know? So Walt's the more active character in, in that respect, and they're more passive characters in that respect. So when you've got all that, then uh, you, you need to write a conclusion. And your conclusion is very simply going to say, to what extent are they similar? To what extent are they different? So you've, you've been examining that in the main body of your text. And in this case, your conclusion would be, in very basic terms, well, there are many similarities between Walt and the white working class men, but there are also a few differences. Yeah, and depending on uh, what your examination has brought to light, uh, your conclusion is going to be a bit different. Yeah? You, could say, you could say that there are only a few similarities but many differences, or it's equally balanced or whatever. But that's what you need to be saying uh, in your conclusion. Um, let me, just to finish, give you a few phrases uh, or words that you can use to help you structure this text. So if you if you want to point out the similarities between a character, you could use an expression like both and, sowohl als auch. So for example, um, I don't know, both John and Peter have 12 fingers. There are people with 12 fingers, by the way. It's called polydactyly. Interesting fact of the day, not. Uh, so both and. You can also use a word like similarly. John has 12 fingers. Similarly, Peter has 12 fingers. Uh, or, as is the case with John, Peter has 12 fingers. Now, those are just three simple words or phrases that you can use to point out similarities. And as far as differences are concerned, in contrast to, in contrast to Peter, who has 12 fingers, John only has 10. You could also use whereas, während, Whereas John has 12 fingers, Peter has 10 fingers. Or unlike, unlike John, Peter has 10 fingers. Unlike John who has 12 fingers, Peter has 10 fingers. Okay, those are just a couple of the kind of expressions you, you should be using uh, when you're writing a comparison question like that. Okay, so to, to sum up, the essential part of that is that you're, you're, uh, you really are comparing yeah, pointing out the similarities and differences uh, as regards a theme or a topic, or as in this case, as regards characters. Classic type of question in the Abitur. Uh, you've been doing it well anyway. Now you're going to be able to do it even better than that. Uh, I hope you're doing fine. I hope you're doing great. Enjoy yourselves as much as you can. 
keep working hard and I shall see you soon. It's goodbye from me, goodbye from him, goodbye from... I've been told to call her Hedwig. I don't know if I should call her Hedwig. She's the wrong colour. Hedwig's white. This one's brown. But until I get a better name, no one seems to have liked Towel. We'll stick with Hedwig. See you soon. Bye.